yard. It is a beautiful spring day here in Phoenix, Arizona. We are in our tropical food forest part of the green yard. For those of you that haven't watched this before, we're located in central Phoenix and we're on just over a third of an acre lot. And when we first moved in, kind of how the green yard came about is when we first moved in, uh, this was nothing but just a dirt, <laughs> basically a dirt lot. There was a few features in the other part of the green yard. We did have these sheds behind me here, but the rest of the green yard, this whole area was nothing but just dirt. And so anytime it rained or anytime we got our flood irrigation, it was just nothing but mud everywhere. And so my goal coming into uh, this YouTube channel was to kind of bring everybody along as we went on this journey to making this uh, a green yard. Not only, um, you know, have it be landscape, but also have it be, you know, edible and profitable and livable in this landscape as well. So, um, this is, this food forest is about two and a half years old and uh, some of the trees are newer, some are older. And so uh, today I want to do kind of a 2023 up the spring update tour of the green yard. I haven't done one of these in over a year. I'm really excited to show everybody how uh, amazing all of our trees are doing. Um, we, we really have a great variety here. Just in the food forest part of the green yard, I'm just gonna show you our tropical food forest. And of course, uh, you know, like, subscribe. Uh, we'd love to have you watch more of our awesome videos about growing some of these amazing fruiting and flowering trees here in the Phoenix area. Here we go. So I figured we'd start with the absolute pride and joy of the green yard, or at least my pride and joy here. Um, this is our beautiful jackfruit tree. Um, this tree has actually been in the ground since fall of 2020. So um, I did plant it. It's been through three winters already. I do protect it in the winter. So I do um, build a frost structure uh, out of frost fabric around it, supply some supplemental heat as well. Um, but this tree is just, it's beautiful. When I planted it, it was about a foot and a half tall um, and that was it. So in the last, you know, uh, three years, it's grown to this almost four foot tall behemoth of a tree. Um, it does get kind of full afternoon sun. I shaded it the first two years, but last year I didn't shade it with that afternoon sun that it gets, and it actually thrived on that. It, it grew exponentially, so I don't know if I'm just in a really good spot or if it really likes that afternoon sun, but this is our beautiful, amazing jackfruit tree. I'm really excited to see how well it does this year, this growing season. It just started um, putting off these brand new uh, leaves everywhere, starting to sprout some new branches on the interior trunk. So I think we're gonna have a really great uh, year with our jackfruit tree. And hopefully uh, in the next few years, maybe we'll get some, some fruit too. That would be amazing here in Phoenix. Uh, typically with jackfruit, you don't see them fruit here. Um, or at least I haven't heard of anyone getting jackfruit to fruit here, but hopefully maybe this will be the first one. I don't know. Uh, over here on my right hand side we have our African tulip tree. I've done an episode before on our African tulip tree. Um, it handled the winter very well. I only protected it up to about uh, my height. Um, so it had kind of this corner here. I did not provide any external heat, just the frost. Um, so pretty much above where my height is, it all died back. But there's a whole bunch of brand new branches on here. Um, when I planted this guy, I actually have a planting video in there. 
it was about three feet tall or so and now we're pushing you know that eight foot eight foot range so i'm sure by the end of the year we'll get to that 10 12 foot range there are mature trees here in the phoenix area that have flowered before i've seen them flower before so it is possible to get that african tulip tree to flower here in phoenix they absolutely love our heat they like the full sun the thing with our african tulips is they do not like our winter anything below really that 50 degree weather they start having some issues so i definitely protect this tree uh, when it gets below that 50 degree weather so over here in this corner right now we have our, our jackfruit tree we have our african tulip you can see we have kind of the start of our koi fish pond here as well and in the future the plan is to plant uh, at least one more tree in this area um, and then definitely some brown cover as well. So let's move on to kind of the trees just below the camera here and continue our tour. I like to densely plant my trees, plant them close together, especially our ultra tropicals, because it allows them to kind of create that microclimate where they have better success, especially in the summer with our heat, depending on the tree, and in the winter with our cold. So um, planting it, planting the trees more densely together provides more of that forest um, kind of microclimate and definitely allows them to, to thrive here in the Phoenix desert. So um, back in this corner here, we have one of our newly planted trees. We actually just planted this last fall. It did make it through the winter. It actually maintained and held onto its leaves all winter uh, until I took off that frost fabric, which I did so uh, in the beginning of March. Unfortunately, when I did that, it got cold and so um, it did die back a little bit, but we do have some new sprouts going on there as well. So um, that would be our hog plum or our jacote tree. So it is coming back. It does have those new sprouts and it looks like we're going to have a very successful year with our hog plum. They like our heat, um, which is part of the reason it's planted over there on the side to kind of grow up into the sun, but they are very cold sensitive. So I'm definitely going to be covering that. Uh, tree there. This is one of the first trees that I planted here in the food forest part of the green yard. I absolutely love this tree. I actually uh, did a harvest video off of this tree yesterday, uh, last year. So I have harvested mangoes out of this food forest in the green yard. I got four carry mangoes last year off of our carry mango tree. It's growing a little funky here. Um, I've heard and learned that uh, trees that are in full are are allowed to grow into full sun or have artificial shade and then grow into and then you can just take off that shade allow them to be in that full sun for our mangoes they actually do better and they have a better shape um, but I actually like the protection of our microclimate here and um, I'm happy with it having the shape for a little bit hopefully it grows up uh, in the next few years and it can reach that full sun and have a little bit better shape but we have gotten fruit off of here it's flowering right now and has these beautiful giant mango flowers um, and i would say we'll probably get at least another four mangoes off this tree hopefully more now that it's in its second uh year of harvest right behind me here is um, our passion fruit vine we actually have two varieties of passion fruit vines we have a purple possum passion fruit that one actually felt flowered and fruited last year. Um, so it, it, our passion fruit vines do grow here. They have the most amazing flowers. If you've never seen a passion fruit flower, definitely look it up. I'll uh, kind of show um, what that looks like as well. And then of course it creates passion fruit, which are amazing. They taste delicious as well. Um, our other variety is actually a yellow variety, similar to uh, uh, like a maracuya. Um, so it, it's a little bit more on the sour side, but definitely something that, um, you know, you can make into a beverage or something like that. The purple, po purple possum is sour, but it also has a little bit of a sweet uh, taste 
kind of aftertaste to it as well. So very good. I ate that one raw. It was delicious. Um, I haven't tried our uh, maracuya yet, our yellow passion fruit yet. Hopefully I'll get to here uh, very soon. Just below our passion fruit is um, one of the other trees that has been here the longest other than our uh, carry mango tree. This is our Jabba de Cabo tree. I do not know the variety. Um, it was kind of a no-name variety that was in a three, really small three gallon pot when I planted it. So it has grown a lot. Um, it does still have some salt. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with some salt burn with the Jabba de Cabo. Even on that flood irrigation that really rinses out the salt. Here in Phoenix we have some issues um, with our salty water as well as with our pH and um, I'll go through that here later in this video as well but um, definitely needs to flush out that salt out of the soil to help it be more successful and to get rid of that salt burn. Um, some of our other trees that really struggle with that salt burn are a low quat. Um, low quat has a hard time with that salt burn as well um, and our jackfruit a little bit too so um, definitely see some salt burn on those trees or avocado too uh, which we'll go through here. Uh, Just next to our Jabba de Cava is our papaya that we actually planted last year. Yes, <laughs> this huge papaya was planted last year around this time. Um, it was only about two feet tall when I planted it. So it has grown exponentially in this last year. It was doing amazing going into winter. Um, totally uncovered all winter. So I didn't cover it all. I didn't protect it at all. It did die back. It did get some frost burn. You can see there's still some leaves that have some frost burn on here. Um, but it has come back. It is putting out a whole bunch of flowers, a whole bunch of fruit, a whole bunch of new growth. Papayas are definitely a uh, good, easy tree to grow here in Phoenix as long as you provide them the right microclimate. Um, speaking of our microclimate here in this tropical food forest, we have a giant male mulberry tree that's above us, about a 40, 50 foot male mulberry tree. Uh, I like to call it the mother tree of our food forest and it provides all of this afternoon shade for all of our beautiful tropical trees that require that afternoon shade in order to be successful here. It also helps provide kind of a microclimate in the winter as well. So, um, you know, when it does get a little bit colder, we have a little bit more of that protection. And it also defoliates, um, which allows that sun to come in uh, in the winter so it is still uh, warm here in the food forest part of the green yard which most of our tropical trees need. Uh, I do supplemental covering as well and I do have an episode on that too. So let's move over kind of to more of our uh, little secluded area over here where we have some of our ultra tropical trees. secluded uh, part of the food forest, the tropical food forest in the green yard. Um, this is where I have more of my like ultra tropical trees. So right here is that papaya that we were just talking about. Uh, I'll show you the fruit here in a second. But next to it is this beautiful soursop tree. So this is actually soursop. I planted it last spring around this time. It did make it through the winter really well. Um, I did protect it. I actually, in my cold protection video, I, I do uh, do a cold protection, uh, frost protection over these trees. I added supplemental heat. Uh, definitely going to keep doing that for the next few years uh, as it gets, you know, more and more mature. One thing that's really interesting is kind of the cycle that nature has. You know, we, we often don't, we're not connected enough with nature to really notice those cycles. 
but nature really does go through those cycles and this soursop tree is a perfect example so it made it through all winter with all of its leaves put on some new growth in its frost structure and um, right around the time that it was starting to get warm and I started taking off the frost structure and I actually started looking uh, a little sickly not looking very good and I took off the frost structure we had a couple cold nights in the mid to low 40s which our sour sump trees are not supposed to do very well with it did amazing it handled it like a champ and what happened is it completely defoliated it lost all of its leaves it went through this this natural cycle that these trees go through beautiful swallowtail butterfly just came in here maybe it'll come back maybe it'll land on me Hi, buddy. but it went through this cycle and i wasn't expecting it to to do this but it actually needed to lose all of its leaves in order for these new leaves to come out so um, all of these new leaves are coming out it's starting to look really really good you can see there's still there were still some old leaves on here but it definitely dropped all of its old leaves defoliated and now all of these new leaves are coming back and it's just a cycle in nature so next time your plants don't look good especially at the change of a season it might just be a cycle that's happening in nature something new i didn't realize that but uh definitely true when it comes to our soursop here so um back here we have some more of our other tropical ultra tropicals uh this is probably the most tropical tree we have back in this space um, other than our soursop tree this is our santal tree i did a um, planting video on it uh, last fall when i put it in the ground our santal tree is um, a type of, uh, or related to a mangosteen. It's kind of like the wild mangosteen. So um, not quite as, as sweet as those mangosteens, but still uh, very similar. It's also called cotton uh, cotton fruit, I think, or cotton candy fruit. Can't quite, don't quote me on that. I think it's cotton, cotton fruit. Um, this is an ultra tropical tree and in this microclimate that's been created it, it is thriving and doing really well here um i feel like now is a good time to mention uh water usage so um we get flood irrigation once every two weeks i don't supplemental water sorry a little interruption there um so i haven't supplemental watered at all um so last fall and this spring um, all we've been getting is our flood irrigation, um, which we get that, like I mentioned, once every two weeks, the yard floods. Um, I've added a little bit of different techniques to try to conserve that water from our flood irrigation. Um, so that way I don't have to use supplemental watering. Um, once in a while I do for some of our potted uh, trees, just because I don't, the flood irrigation won't reach to that. Um, so I'm always striving to be better with our water usage. Um, right now, once every two weeks is how often I watered. That's how often I watered the majority of our trees last summer. Um, only the really new ones like our avocado was new last year, soursop, santal. Um, those newer trees I watered once every week in the summer. Um, so they did get some supplemental water. I'm not planning on doing that this year unless something looks like it really needs it. And I owe that kind of water conservation when it comes to really farming uh, my own food because that's basically what we're doing here is uh, taking, you know, uh, farmland. This, this whole area, this whole subdivision, this part of Phoenix used to be farmland. They converted into houses back in the 40s. And now it is... Uh, you know green yards everywhere I'm trying to kind of take back that space and and farm some of my own food so I'm kind of using this regenerative regenerative uh, idea of farming with the heavy mulching um, trying to create more of that organic material which in turn will hold more water so I'm always striving to kind of be better with my water usage um, and be able to grow all of these amazing foods um with that flood irrigation that we get once every few weeks and not to you know use too much water um over here to my left we have our dwarf namwa banana dwarf namwa bananas uh are dwarf they produce a smaller uh banana they are very good i've had one produce at our old house before 
for the green yard. Uh, so far in the green yard, I haven't had any produce, but I do have some over in another part of the green yard, and I have these guys right here. I did also just plant this um, ice cream bean, I'm sorry, this ice cream banana uh, blue java pup. I just planted that uh, a couple days ago. I actually wanted to do a video, it didn't work out. And the reason I did so is because our sandal tree is not doing so well with this direct sun that it's getting. Unfortunately, our microclimate, this canopy doesn't extend all the way over, so it does get kind of blasted with that afternoon sun. So I want to minimize that, help our sandal tree grow up uh, until the point it can take that full sun when it's a little bit more mature. So I put this ice cream bean, uh, I'm sorry, this ice cream banana here to hopefully grow up and kind of shade in this area. I do have two racks of ice cream bananas uh, on a tree right now, which I can show you. Um, doing really well. I can't wait to harvest those this year and I'll definitely be doing a harvest video as well. As we move back a little bit further over here, um, I have our loquat tree. Uh, I thought I was going to get some fruit this year. I got fruit the first year that it was in the ground and I haven't since then. So this is its third winter in the ground as well. I actually did a planting video on both our loquat and our Michaelia alba. It has grown exponentially. Um, it's actually taller than I am now. And it just keeps on putting off these beautiful, uh, soft, fuzzy leaves. So the leaves hold the medicinal property as well. I haven't used it for that. I just like the fruit. The fruit is this um, kind of like golf ball sized yellow fruit and they're absolutely delicious. Hints of like strawberry in there, a little bit of pear, really, really great fruit. And then back here as well, I have our Michaelia alba. Michaelia albas are a flowering tree, uh, orchid tree, type of orchid tree. Um, and they uh, produce this beautiful white flower uh, and it's really, really, it has this amazing smell and it's really strong. So when it blooms in June, July, I can actually smell it in the whole entire green yard, not just over here in the food forest part of the green yard. So uh, really fun tree to grow. Uh, one of our few trees in the green yard that is here for more of a uh, aesthetic appeal as opposed to uh, growing food. The majority of the things that we have in the green yard are here to grow food. So we're going to head over to the other side of the tree, um, our beautiful mother tree. Before we do though, just underneath the camera here I do have a plumeria talking about our uh, kind of aesthetic trees. I thought it would be really pretty to kind of grow that plumeria over the pond. Um, so it's still waking up from the winter, but it did very well through the winter. It actually grew about eight inches or so last year. Uh, a really, really amazing tree. Just past it here, uh, growing up our mother tree, we have a, a dragon fruit. This is a red dragon fruit. The flesh on the inside is red as well. I have a yellow dragon fruit in another part of the green yard. Doesn't really seem to be taking off. So. I got this red dragon fruit. It's been doing really well growing like crazy. Um, I actually might get some flowers this year just because of the way that it's growing. It's starting to kind of droop down. And for dragon fruit, um, this one got no cold protection this year. Um, but for our dragon fruits, when they droop down, that's when those flowers start to kind of produce as well, which is super cool. Um, both our Michaelia alba behind me as well as our low pot, they require uh, protection in the summer. Uh, meaning just that afternoon shade. When I say afternoon shade, I mean anytime after 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, they kind of get that shade. Um, but during the winter, they require no shade at all. They actually enjoy our cooler temperatures. So kind of a mixed, uh, mixed microclimate need here over in this tropical food forest. So let's move on and talk about some of our uh, amazing plants on the other side of this mother tree.
Alright, so here's a little fun update. It was almost a year ago exactly that I planted this Hall Avocado. Kind of kick-started this uh, kind of new video progress that we've been doing with the Green Yard. We're trying to put out a video every every week or so. Really try to bring um, kind of this this uh, my own personal knowledge to all of you and the efforts that hopefully you can grow your own food as well. Uh, especially some of these tropical trees here. So. Um, this is a Hall Avocado. Um, it actually just went through its kind of molting stage. So every year avocados here in Phoenix, uh, in kind of that end of March, beginning of April time, they actually look really sick and they look like they're dying and really not doing good. And what's happening is they're actually just getting rid of all of their old leaves and they start putting out these really beautiful new leaves. So, um, this guy has been doing really well in the ground. Um, it, it's very protected. So with our avocados, they do fine in our winters. They can handle our winters like a champ. This one was totally uncovered last year and we had one of our coldest winters that we've had in a very long time. Um, so it does really well. The only thing is, is that it needs that sun protection, that afternoon shade. So we have our giant mother tree to really protect it in the afternoon. Um, but basically the main issue with avocados is getting sunburned. Uh, we have really intense sun here and, and some of our trees, uh, fruiting trees, they do not like that intense sun. Avocados would be one of them. So I'm hoping this guy continues to grow, continues to thrive. Last year, as soon as I put it in the ground, it kind of went through this spurt where it had all these flowers and it started to hold on to little baby avocados and I got super excited. Of course they dropped off, you know, first year in the ground, but I'm hoping uh, this year we're not going to see any. I know we're not going to get any this year. Uh, so I'm hoping this is really just an establishing year where the tree really establishes its roots, starts to grow, thrive, maybe puts on another foot or two of, of height. And then the following year is when we'll start to see maybe some of that fruit growth. So um, that's kind of my hope for our avocado tree here, a fall avocado. Um, avocados sometimes need uh, a second tree to pollinate. Most of the time, the reason why they say that they need that second pollinator is because uh, they will get more fruit with that second pollinator. So you'll still get avocados with just one tree as a self-pollinating tree, but if you have two, then you get more fruit. Just behind here, I know you can't see it from that angle, but I'll, uh, I'll show you kind of in a, in a B-roll clip here, but we have our Miracle Fruit, uh, Miracle Fruit tree. It's more of a small bush right now, but um, Miracle Fruit is a, is a wonderful uh, small red berry that actually can make sour things taste sweet. Um, it's been doing really good here. It's been in the ground for, uh, same as, as the majority of our older plants, it's been in the ground for about um, over three winters. So two and a half years, almost three years. Um, it's been in the ground. It hasn't grown, it's grown maybe six inches, but they're notoriously slow growers. So it may take, you know, another five, 10 years for it to reach that three foot, four foot range, especially in ground. A lot of people grow these in uh, pots and it's easier to control the pH when it's in a pot. Speaking of pH, part of the other reason why I'm able to grow all these beautiful trees is because I balance, I'm sorry, I lower our pH here in the green yard using agricultural sulfur. Um, most of the trees that I've shown you so far, actually all of the trees and plants that I've shown you so far require a lower pH, uh, generally between like a 4.5 and a 6.5 range. Um, here in Phoenix, we're at 8.5. So we need to lower that pH in order for the plants to be able to access the nutrients that are in the soil. Without that lower pH or the correct pH balance in the soil, those plants have a hard time accessing those nutrients. So then they, they look terrible or they start dying just because they can't access their food, they're not eating. Um, this is our, our yellow, I'm sorry, this is our purple possum. Uh, really beautiful vine. It's actually kind of taken over. I gotta trim some of it, but we have a bunch of flowers on here. Um, these are actually little flower buds. So hopefully we get a bunch of, uh, of passion fruits this year. That's kind of the goal. 
And then just underneath here, I also did a video on this guy before, but that is our rose apple. Um, I covered our rose apple the first year. I did a little bit of research before uh, we hit our winter and rose apple actually can survive our winters here. So it was completely uncovered all winter. Um, did amazing. We, like I said before, we had one of our coldest winters in the last decade and it did really well. It actually did so well that as soon as we started hitting a little bit warmer temperature, it put on the new growth. So it's probably had, you know, eight new branches just come off that main trunk. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe with that rose apple, maybe they need a little bit of that cold to kind of kickstart that new growth. Maybe some fruit production in a couple years. I'm not sure we're kind of figuring that one out. So let's head uh, back to the last part of the green yard, or the food forest part of the green yard and finish up our spring 2023 tour. Uh, let's go. Kind of finishing up um, we have kind of the main uh, food forest part of the green yard and then we have kind of this off section that leads to the rest of the yard here um, that main part is about a thousand square feet so it's pretty small in size that pond is a large portion of it we have our koi fish pond over there uh, this part is probably another four I'm sorry it's about 600 feet and this part is about 400 feet square feet over here. So in total, just you know, for our food forest part of the green yard, we probably have about a thousand square feet, uh, and and some of that is taken up by this pathway too. So not all that thousand square feet is growing space. Behind me here, I have our Grammy Chama tree. Um, Grammy Chama trees are also known as Brazilian cherry. Uh, this tree is one of the is is kind of in that first round of planting that i did uh when we first moved in so it's been through three winters so far three summers um really good looking tree it just put off all this new growth here i actually think it needs a little bit more sun um it's kind of protected by this uh passion fruit vine so i'm thinking of cutting back the passion fruit vine a little bit more and getting it a little bit more sun uh, so far, no fruit off this guy. I have heard that they do fruit here in the Phoenix area. I just haven't experienced it yet. Um, they do need our after, uh, protection in the in the summer, that afternoon shade. But winter time, these guys do great with our uh, winter. So I didn't cover it at all this winter. And once again, we have one of the coldest winters we've had in a long time, and it did great. Behind me here, we have uh, another one of our trees that I've done an episode on. This is our lychee tree. Um, some people were questioning if it's a lychee or not. I'm pretty sure it's a lychee. Um, like I said uh, in, in that video, uh, nursery sold it to me as a lychee, so I'm really hoping that they know their stuff. Um, it, it has been flowering this year, and it looks like we might get some fruit on it, which is super awesome. So I'm really hopeful that we get fruit this year off of this lychee and uh, I get to kind of harvest my first lychees. Lychees grow very slow here in the Phoenix area as well, and they do also require a lot of, uh, a really low pH. So I add a lot of agricultural sulfur to this guy to allow him to be able to take up those uh, nutrients and survive and thrive. So this is kind of the very small side here, and on the other side we have some little trees. So let's check out that side. This planting bed over here against the, the house. Um, this is kind of our final side of the green yard. It's also the least planted. I know uh, we have a bunch of trees over here, but we actually have a lot of space for additional trees, and this is where they're going to go. I'd like to do another avocado tree in the future. Um, there's a lot that I would like to plant over here. Uh, definitely a star fruit. Um, maybe even uh, some other varieties of um, some of those tropical trees like Bolinia, 
something like that and really push some boundaries. This is a really protected area, so it would be a good spot for it. Over here, though, we have another one of our papaya trees. This was actually planted at the same time as the other papaya. This one did actually better during the winter than the other one did. The other one got a lot more frost burn than this one. I think it's just because of the proximity that it has to the house. But this one actually has some big fruit on here already. And I never had smelled a papaya blossom before, but they smell amazing. So we got some of these really beautiful papaya blossoms on here too that just smell the one of the best smelling flowers I've ever smelled in the way. Uh, just below it, we have our long end tree. Uh, this is what a lot of people thought our lychee was. Uh, this is our long end. It's putting off a whole bunch of new growth right now. Um, it's been struggling a little bit. Uh, I think it's just kind of getting used to its spot. Um, but last year, it put out a bunch of new growth. And I didn't quite have the same coverage that I do this year uh, for our mulberry trees, so it just got burnt. Um, it does require that afternoon shade, but during the winter, no protection whatsoever. So this whole area last winter, um, our rose apple, our garmachama tree, lychee, uh, long in, our papaya, our um, cherry tree, which I'll think of the name in a second because we're going to talk about it in the video. This whole area, no cold protection whatsoever. So that was super great too. Um, but I'm hoping this year it has a bunch of flowers on it. I don't think it's going to fruit this year. I'm just hoping that it gets some really great uh, growth and it really helps it uh, to be more successful. So um, then we have our cherry tree here. I can't remember the name. Why can't I remember the name? I'm going to post it. It's going to be there. Uh, produces a, a smaller cherry, has little bumps on it, uh, a little bit more on the sour side. It has been doing really, really well in this area. Uh, like I mentioned before, no cold protection this last year. Uh, this was its second winter in the ground, um, but it's already grown exponentially. I actually have flowers on it this year, which is really cool to see. Uh, it didn't hold on to any of those fruits, but at least we're getting flowers. So I know that it's happy in its location, that it's gonna do good, and hopefully we get some fruit here uh, in the near future. Suriname cherry, it's a Sur Suriname cherry tree. Uh, here and uh, Suriname cherry trees do do get to be like six seven feet here in the Phoenix area They do very well with our climate, especially if you give them that afternoon shade and then last but not least is a newly planted tree This is our foxtail palm tree I did it because just on the other side of this fence this newly placed fence that's going to kind of be this uh, beautiful um, Entrance into the world that is the tropical food forest part of the green yard um, on the other side, we're going to eventually put a above ground hot tub and so we'll have this beautiful foxtail palm tree growing up uh, to kind of create more of that tropical feel as well. So um, it is definitely possible to grow uh, these tropical trees to get your own fruit. Um, we have so many more trees uh, out in the rest of the green yard. I definitely recommend you checking out our other videos. This is just a brief tour of the food forest part of the green yard, but it definitely shows what is possible here in Phoenix. I still maintain Phoenix is one of the best growing climates in the world. And that's part of the reason that people have been farming in the Phoenix Valley for the last uh, several thousand years um, is just because we really do have that great climate where we can grow so much. Um, if you like this video, definitely like, subscribe, uh, check out our other videos. Hopefully you find something that you like. Um, I just love growing all of these trees and I can't wait to start harvesting my own food, um, being a little bit more self-sufficient. So as always, live green, plant lots, and of course have fun. I'm going to try my best uh, and hopefully I get to bring you some papaya harvest videos and lychee harvest videos and a bunch of great content here soon. See you next time.